around what we call self-service in the banking industry, and then obviously other types of self-service, uh, any kind of kiosks where people are uh, interacting with a device and there's nobody there to help if something goes wrong. Um, one of the interesting ones we did was uh, one of the Opi copies uh, a couple of years ago, they decided that there was going to be no cash and the only way that people could buy was on a card and we had near, um, we, we had wireless technologies helping people swipe their cards, NFC cards, and, and we integrated those into the banking system. So just as an example. Having said that, you'll see two names up there today. Um, and really what we're talking about is the concept of a managed self-service network. So these are devices that you want to be able to run 24-7, 365. Uh, it's where our experience lies, how robust the application is, and very importantly, the monitoring thereof. And not only the monitoring, the monitoring, the management and control. Because if you're monitoring things and you can't manage and control what's happening in those endpoints, without somebody else having to go out there, that's where the costs start to accumulate. And people get frustrated. People are standing in front of the machine and they're getting aggravated, you can't see what's going on. So we have two major technologies that have grown side by side over the years. They've been sold all over the world to banks all over the world. The one being Surveil, uh, which was originally um, conceived as an ATM monitoring system and has grown to a lot more than that. It's in the cloud. It even does license management and things like that. But that product has been developed over a period of 16 years. And a product called Saligna, uh, which is effectively a framework, an application framework upon which you can use to abstract the problems that you have with hardware and be able to deliver applications quicker and easier into the web type um, uh, environmentally friendly um, web-friendly types of applications. So you're able to build applications as if people were building websites and we'll explain to you how that works. So these two will work in tandem together um, in terms of what we see as that managed self-service kiosking solution hopefully for your industry and for, for, for Mike's business. Thank you. So um, that's just an idea of some of the companies we've done business for around the world. Okay, those are our offices all over the world. I'm not going to um, get into too much detail there, uh, but you'll see there's a lot of banks. There's also manufacturing companies, Mars, as you know, Mars, uh, Mars Bars, a food company. Um, also importantly, and maybe more relevant in South Africa, the airports company in South Africa. So when you go through uh, and you scan your barcode, those kiosks and devices and the applications that run it, we manage those and we deliver those to access. So when you go out of this, the borders of South Africa and you scan your boarding pass, it's our application. So I've touched on this a little bit anyway, our solutions and product offerings. Um, so I'm not going to go into too, too much. We'll see self-service kiosks, but what we started to add to our, um, uh, to our platforms are IoT devices um, that use mesh networks and the low power networks around the country because they're more relevant to remote areas, okay? And what we've decided, and the way we built out Surveil, which is the monitoring uh, part of this, is as a platform. Instead of creating a single solution just to do one thing, okay, it's a solution that's really built for managed service providers to be able to, and I'll explain to you how the architecture works and why it is a very, very flexible platform that we hope Verisec will be able to use um, uh, to, to manage their, their kiosk network a little bit more efficiently. The next one, uh, we are very strong at data acquisition, aggregation, and visualization. You'll see that through the course of uh, some of the screens that I show you. I'm not going to go into too much depth with the demos, but I'll give you an idea. Um, what we do very strongly is get the data, whether it's from a wind turbine, from a Formula One racing machine, and we actually did that um, uh, engine. Uh, ATM, self-service kiosks, IoT-based devices, servers, virtual hosts, circuits, networks, uh, routers, switches, you'll see that a little bit later on. And then we put that, most importantly, in a single pane of glass. Um, and that single pane of glass might look slightly different for different people. An operator, for, um, as, uh, and we're going to look at a life in the day of a very sick support engineer, that might look very different to what it used to be. Um, or for that matter, an IT infrastructure 
of the customer where you've seen both, you've both seen the same pane of glass or you've seen a subset and I'll show you a little bit later. So um, we do the terminal applications as well. Uh, the, the, the relevance of that is we don't necessarily have to be developing that terminal application ourselves but we understand self-service applications um, and, and very much the, the CX part of it so that customer experience and the ergonomics of how you interact with a device that really can't talk to you and tell you that it's hurting or that you've done something and it can't help you. Um, and then the multi-tenancy, multiple personality, uh, that just basically means that we can effectively um, create many different types of environments and different applications on one platform and we'll show you how architecturally we would be able to deliver that for your organization going forward. Uh, that's the, the, the power of our, our platform, and that's why we call it a hybrid cloud management platform, is that section was built in conjunction with Bytes UK. It now has 1.5 million users on it. So it launched, uh, and within four weeks had 1 million users on it. It effectively manages licensing for Microsoft uh, and Azure. Um, but that's all built into the same platform. We don't need to lead the application to get into these other areas, and they all tie very, very much in, in with each other. So, next one. Um, I'm, I'm gonna touch on the surveil architecture because that's what makes it so um, uh, compelling for us when we speak to people who want to use it as a tool to manage their estate. We've got a plugin-based architecture. I'll just read that quickly. All components are designed as plugins. Both agent and server plugins can be deployed without having to restart or interrupt current, current monitoring. So in other words, in runtime, we are busy changing things in many states so that we don't have to necessarily bring machines down and bring machines up. The plugin architecture helps us to be able to do the kind of things that I spoke to you about earlier. Crazy things like monitoring wind turbines where the thing actually came from monitoring the kiosk. It's because we've got this plugin architecture the, the normal effort for us to build a plugin, as an example, and I can't guarantee it, but it's days, okay, or even hours. So when people sit down and look at a type of device that we have never ever monitored before, or never seen before within our estate, we are able to create that via an agent plugin. Uh, it's a cloud-based server architecture, so although we can deploy on-prem, uh, most of our instances we've deployed in either Azure or AWS, so for us to spin up customers and get them in a pilot situation in parallel with their current systems that they may be using is very simple. In addition, because of their architecture, we don't, we don't enforce a forklift um, upgrade scenario. We go low risk, we move in parallel, and we start to migrate. Thank you. Okay. Right, so this is touching a little bit more on the details, you've got business modules on top there. Um, it even goes into Skype for Business and Skype for Business's teams. Because it's in essence a monitoring and management control system, it can do all of that within that same plan of loss. The surveil core, however, and when we're talking today, perhaps more relevant to the kiosk, that bottom part, those enabling modules become uh, more relevant. So as in configuration management built in, uh, software distribution built in, media management built in. We'll talk about a little bit of a use case just now to see, to give you an example. And then field service book built in. So what we don't do is we normally a lot of our, uh, our competitors, they build these modules and then you buy that module and then you buy that module and then you buy that module uh, and then you take this module and you want to manage, uh, let's say for instance, I want to uh, monitor the hardware. So you pay for an agent there, and I want to monitor the operating system, you pay for an agent there. Then I'd like to see certain files that are running in a directory, you pay for an element or whatever they call it. So uh, we don't work that way. Um, as a South African company, we also South African based in terms of the way we price, although um, our UK pricing is in pounds, but we, we, uh, we do the same. It's, it's, if we charge a pound in, in uh, the UK, we charge 18 and yeah, that kind of thing. We have not taken that approach. Uh, we've had to compete against big giants like SolarWinds and Unicenter and stuff like that. And that's why we've got traction with our monitoring tools. Having said that, the monitoring tools are very, very tightly, in this instance, very, very tightly associated with exactly how we believe a very safe support engineer will be looking after their state going forward. 
Um, a little bit more detail, uh, agent plugging, file tailing becomes extremely important in environments where things disappear off devices. Okay? Um, a file disappears, somebody goes and does something, they block the feed, they plug something in. So uh, we do the file tailing, we check for files that are right in those environments, um, and we also retrieve those files as well. So later. Custom bespoke is very much along the lines of when you've got existing legacy systems and ERP systems or um, point of sale systems or um, uh, financial systems, whatever it is, planning systems, uh, because of that API and back office plugin architecture, it becomes very simple for us to, to interface with existing systems and share data. The platform is normally that of the day we see as a platform. And we said that it's not just a piece of hardware to us, that's a piece of hardware with lots of different components and lots of very complicated processes running inside the operating system for multiple applications. Um, ancillary for us, is probably where we're the strongest. Those ancillary functions, and you'll see when I show you just now the system, they go into hundreds of things that we are able to do on that system before you have to intervene, either manually or physically at all. So these are functions that we build together with our customers, which um, enable our customers to be able to remotely manage those environments in a more effective manner. Um, underneath there, notifications, are, are, are extremely important to us and when we look at the life of a support engineer it's all very well flooding people with thousands of alerts and they're looking at a board and things are going red and green and, uh, and, and you're sitting in a knock and yes if you've got 50 people sitting with cinema screens uh, that's fine and a lot of people have got operations like that. The practicalities that we build are very very easy for us to understand. This event happens, it creates this alert and it does something very powerful using those ancillaries, and I'll discuss it just now. It does an operation before you have to go out or before you have to log onto that device. And then it reports afterwards and tells you what has happened and what may have changed or may not have changed. Okay, um, so uh, on the notification side, we basically, uh, for our services, we look after a state of a few thousand cache devices. Uh, we process over 110 billion rand a year in cash and we have to monitor and manage every single note that goes in uh, and where they go to and how they are settled within that bank. We use the system to make sure that um, when something goes wrong with that device because yes, it's, it's, in a it's attended in some way because there's a merchant putting cash into it, that's not a technically um, astute person. Um, so that alert goes straight into our queue in our service desk, we've got a global service desk, it raises it immediately, escalates it correctly to the right a resolver group, and then informs the customer that either it's something that has happened or it's already been fixed, and the system does that. The data syncing helps us to be able to interface with these legacy systems. Server collection, these are things where devices can't run an agent or can't run a piece of software, you might have networks uh, that, uh, that use SNMP or um, uh, IPMI. So there's certain systems where you can't run an agent on there. Um, we've got um, plugins to be able to look after that type of information and then bundles and content helps us when we distribute new software, distribute new uh, versions, when we distribute new versions of our own software, it helps manage that uh, deployment to that estate so that you're not doing it by what feeding it with a memory stick. Next. So that really just, this last slide over here, I'm not going to spend a lot more time on the, on the PowerPoint side, is this basically shows you why that is powerful in terms of when you're running a self-service application. You've got your configuration management, you're looking at your platform, and over and above your platform, you're looking at many, many services and applications you're putting those all together, you're using the power of being able to retrieve logs of that device, okay? You use the software distribution to either put down patches, uh, and then you've got the scenario where you've got alerts telling you, I need you to do a remote operation. That remote operation may, for instance, be an automated operation. It could be as simple as us, um, we, we've run out of CPU, the memory, we've got a memory leak, whatever the case may be, the CPU got up to a certain stage, okay, clear the CPU, reboot the machine. 
Um, and that might happen for that matter at night, and it normally does. So there's no one even at that device, and it's almost as if nobody gets to know about it. Next slide. I'm not going to go through this all because this kind of um, uh, summarizes what I've just spoken to you about. But very importantly, legacy systems are never a problem for us. Uh, if you can imagine that we have to integrate into banks or into manufacturing systems, IIoT systems that already exist, SCADA systems inside manufacturing factories, legacy systems are not a worry for us. We're also not very, very um, uh, jealous about the fact that our brand has to be used or only our solution can be used. We've run NOX and ITOX and SOX for international FTSE 250 companies and we've used SolarWinds. Okay. It's just about the consolidation of the data. we used our power of being able to collect the data and send it into things like cognitive services for machine learning, artificial intelligence, where SolarWinds either would have cost too much or it was architecturally set up differently. Um, that remote resolution, managing the device content, you know, very often that's a very, very valuable piece of real estate. People may want to put messages out there. You don't want it to be difficult to put things on that screen. I'm not saying it is right now, but you want to be able to manage that, know what version, what you're flighting, uh, what's in idle screen all the time, and you want to be able to use your own um, uh, content. You'll see that when we use our software distribution system, Effectively, what it does is it goes into a queue, it finds itself wherever it is, and then propagates itself throughout that whole that, that network. Um, right, so what I'm going to do is what I've spoken about so far is I've spoken about the management part of it, the monitoring, the control, I've spoken about the operations. We're going to do a little demo just now to show you how powerful that is. Uh, but what we found when we spoke with, with Mike is that there are sometimes challenges with what we would call monolithic applications. So an application is written in .NET technology, it's running on the operating system. Now somebody wants to bring in um, a, a technology or you need to bring in, or the company needs to bring in another application, and that application may be web-based technologies, okay, and it's talking, now it has to talk to that same hardware layer. So Seligna, the product Seligna, takes all those problems away. And I've asked our product um, owner, uh, Niall, to come and give you, I've given him two minutes per, per uh, slide, <laughs> so we're not going to spend a lot of time. But just to give you basic understanding of the concept of why this becomes very important when you're looking at a very valuable piece of real estate and you want to bring new value, okay, what is the business case? Do I have to go and measure, to visit each machine? Do I have to pull the machine down? There's people in front of the machine right now, I have to wait off some. This helps us with regards to the total cost of ownership, it helps with regards to that business case and time to market. So Niall's going to give you these two slides on our product called um, Seligna. Um, we believe that your application uh, in the future will be able to run on the platform in a very uh, I won't get into too many of the technical details, I'll touch on a few of the motivating reasons why I've got to the way that it is. And then um, I'll walk you through a typical device and actually want to do something with it. So it's very much a layer of architecture. The core of the application, or, or, um, or the core of the container is where the application is with live, is, is in the middle there. So each of the applications are offered a um, container to render themselves in, and they themselves will also manage their own application budget. Um, we are not descriptive over what the application may or may not do as far as um, on logic goes. The application needs to do what, what needs to get done, and it, it, it's left to do that. We then isolate away everything type device access. One of, the, one of the major issues around having multiple applications on a device, the self service device, is around the contention of the resources. Um, so we, we will manage and, and isolate that. Effectively, the applications would then have, um, would all talk through the limit to the devices. There's the other side as well, any of the key interactions with the host systems are, are also isolated and managed. Um, the applications are, are allowed to inform and need to be agnostic over each other. So Mark uh, mentioned this, and this is one of the, the the differentiating features between what your what your experience would be on a desktop or a PC versus what it is on a self-service uh, kiosk. 
Um, and then the kiosk, you want to own the whole platform. You don't want the guys to have access to anything else other than the applications that are intended to run on, on that box. It's, at the end of the day, it's not a PC. In the sense that it's not like your desktop. Um, so whilst they may, may be aware that there are applications or other applications on the, the, the kiosk, they are agnostic of each other. So um, what would the interaction be? Uh, the, the person would walk out the kiosk, they would see a chessboard or many type layout of the, of the process for, of the applications that are deployed and, and available. Uh, they would pick the one that they need, they would do what needs to be done on the, um, in the application, and then they would uh, log out and or leave. So if they were to leave, the um, it's a linear platform, we know that with the proximity sensors and, um, and effectively application done. So if the application needs some form of log out at that point, or is some other wrap up to be done at that point. Really, I think the key thing here is that it's around the simplicity. You don't want applications talking to each other all the time because um, things go wrong. Every time you bring in an additional application, it's you know, like everything else that's on the box, not just one other application. With uh, the, the Ligma architecture, it doesn't need to know that any of that. It just needs to know that it's being managed and it has access to the devices and the components it needs and it has access to the and its backend services. It will be told when it's time to, to run and to do its thing, and it will be told when there's nobody there and it's time. To... What we looked at here um, on the previous slide was a logical only that's more the physical view of it. So what we're doing, the demo is run through um, on the Cidal side, bring up an application up and down. What you see on the demo is that we don't have access to the backend services. Uh, so that, that, that'll be managed in the access in a um, production network. Um, we also manage all the, or we um, obtain the metrics needed for all the monitoring. Um, again, the, the, the device um, module offers up access to all the components on the device, so that's things like the fingerprint, the biometrics, scanners, the printers and so on. Um, and then that's all what, what the application um, then has access to the, um, the, the network, but back through to its back end. The applications themselves, depending on the mode of delivery, can be rendered off of a um, server in the back end or um, the, the, the locally on the device. Taking that concept, and, and one thing that I just wanted to establish and, and, and make you aware of is we, we're not here today to try and sell you a monitoring system. What we're trying to explain is how the systems that we have available to us will make the lives of the very set operator or support people or your own IT infrastructure, wherever they are, make their lives easier. So it, the, the, I hope you understand it's not the aim to try and sell you a, a, a a monitoring system. So if you just click once, hopefully something comes up. Let's imagine that that's that device over there. So I'm just going to like okay, encapsulate what we've spoken, so, uh, spoken about so far. We'll click again. Okay, there we've got surveil that's looking all the way through the stack on the side. If you click again for us, Seligna so underneath there, we've explained how Seligna so will help you to deploy multiple different types of technologies and containerized type of environment, you click again. Their hypothesizes that that's the app that's existing, that's been written in .NET architecture, .NET um, uh, technology, you click again. That's HTML and CSS. So someone wrote an HTML and CSS application, it's running on exactly the same platform. Click again. All the web technologies that you can think of, uh, boot, uh, Bootstrap, JavaScript, Angular, uh, and React, um, you can write applications in any of those formats, and your service providers then can write their applications in the, um, the, the technologies that they decide is best for them and it's easier for them to maintain and manage. But at the same time, they might have applications that have be re already been written on HTML and would want to deploy it on the platform. So all that put together 
together with the monitoring, control, and management of surveil, is really what makes that device an unattended device that can be managed remotely, properly, and all the time. If you can progress one more slide, we're going to show you just a very, very quick um, demonstration. Uh, it's pretty simple. You need to sort of uh, uh, imagine a little bit more that it could be a lot more complex than that. But if you see there, what we've got is, in essence, we have an application running on that device. There's one there right now. Okay, we can just progress to the next slide. What we're going to do is we're going to kill that application using a remote operation on surveil, which took us all of about 20 seconds to build. Okay, because we know exactly what's happening on that application at all times. We've got all the files, we've got all the folders, we've got all the directories. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to show you what that does, okay, and how surveil does and what it does. You'll see the device, and then we're going to bring that application back to life again, okay, without having ever touched that device and without having touched any really the operating system. Okay, so um, if I can, I'm just going to take this mic now. If you can, unplug now. Thank you. I'm going to do the demo from my workstation there. Hopefully this thing can come off.